Hello friends, uh, welcome back to my channel. Um, uh, well, uh, we are close uh, to the November, close to the winter, and uh, as uh, International Civil Aviation Organization promise, uh, there will be some changes uh, within commercial flights, uh, like you are flying on airliners. Uh, so for those of you, uh, for professional pilots, or let's say, uh, who would like to interest, uh, um, it will be some changes, uh, and I will be talking about uh, changes, uh, but this will be a really, a really short video. Uh, it will be some changes uh, into the... Uh, into the European Safety Agency, uh, which is uh, uh, which has all the aviation authorities from European Unions um, uh, below. Uh, so that means that uh, there are some strictly statements and uh, some procedures uh, which will be changing related to the commercial uh, uh, navigation. Uh, First of all, I would like to put that these things will be valid from, uh, let's say, November. Uh, it was stated that it will be valid from 30 October of uh, 2022, uh, but uh, mm, let's say in the beginning of the November, uh, we should account with some changes, and for those of you, uh, who are uh, really trying to uh, get uh, real life operational procedures in, into account into the flight simulator uh, will be uh, will be very interesting uh, because there will be uh, some changes. Uh, uh, let's say uh, in some particular parts uh, there will be some big changes, and it. The changes are related into the European Safety Agency air operational procedures. Uh, as you know, uh, most of you, the DATPL theory is basically uh, divided uh, into few parts: meteorology, flight planning, and so on and so on. Uh, European Safety Agency uh, air operational procedures. Uh, uh, it's the document uh, which is listed approximately 2,200 pages. Okay, so the operators in real life uh, are, uh, or let's say, will be in a big deal, uh, and then they need to accommodate to the situation and change their their operational manuals and uh, operational procedures as well. Uh, I will point out, for example, a few things. Okay, uh, There are some changes uh, regarding to refueling your airplane and uh, let's say uh, boarding, boarding with refueling. Okay, so what are the procedures and what does it mean? Uh, then uh, Uh, then we have, uh, uh, let's say, uh, flight planning uh, will be a little bit different uh, from um, uh, from the previous uh, ASA operational procedures. Uh, there will be some some changes uh, regarding to establish your destination, your destination alternate airports, and. Uh, as well uh, for the minimums and so on and so on. Uh, so this will be the change in the uh, flight plannings. Uh, there are ch there are some small changes in uh, according to the minimums, okay. And the biggest change is uh, the categorism of the approaches. Uh, it will be uh, because uh, nowadays. Uh, we are uh, commonly using in Europe uh, not conventional navigation procedures with the big airliners, 
uh, but the radar vectors or RNAV procedures, uh, RNAV standard instrument arrivals, uh, RNAV standard instrument departures, uh, so that means uh, that we are lazy uh, because the airplane is doing everything for us and we are no longer, uh, let's say, uh, to use common sense and, uh, and go somewhere in top of your head uh, what was the conventional navigation procedures uh, related into the s some small airports so in this case uh, we are developing the procedures uh, which are called uh, in, U in the United States of Europe it's GPS uh, in uh, uh, for example Indian countries it's uh, Gagan approaches or Ignos approach uh, or whatever you like or to name it but it is still the same it's the approaches which are based uh, on GPS uh, that means that uh, we will unify the, uh, the correct name of the approaches uh, don't uh, use it er now it's RMP required navigation performance per approaches uh, why is it there? Uh, because uh, the RMP approaches uh, uh, should have the onboard, uh, let's say, monitoring and alerting services, and air now is means of area navigation. Uh, it doesn't need to have the the monitoring system on board, uh, and the type of the approaches will be divided into categories: uh, type A approaches and type B. And according to this type of the approach, uh, it will depend your alternate airport, en route alternate airport, uh, fuel en route alternate airport, uh, and your destination alternate airport. The table with changes uh, with your fuel program on board, and uh, this will be uh, basically uh, the the biggest change. Uh, what will happen that uh, there will be the changes uh, related to your company which are you flying for uh, which variant uh, it should be uh, I guess uh, three variants of the establish of the fuel uh, fuel program that means uh, it will be uh, including into your uh, for example fuel calculations the APU uh, fuel consumptions as well for example, okay, and it will be divided into the no longer the decent fuel but the energy fuel, energy decent fuel, okay. Uh, so that means that uh, all the companies and all the dispatchers and the softwares uh, uh, will come uh, throughout this pro uh, process and uh, they will need to, uh, to reconsider it and. Uh, make a big changes so uh, that's it and uh, once the November uh, will be coming and uh, these procedures as a hopes uh, will be in force uh, I will let you know uh, what does it mean and what is the discrepancy uh, between the actual uh, real-life operations and flight simulator purposes regarding to sim brief and navigraph because as we know uh, the flight simulator it's uh, really perfect uh, to to perform or let's say uh, to memorize the standard operational procedures if you become a professional pilot and as well the systems of the aircrafts and, and so on, and so on. Uh, but uh, there are so many bugs and mistakes and so on uh, regarding uh, its completely different database uh, if you compare explain and if you compare uh, compare uh, the, the PMDG on Microsoft Flight Simulator okay so uh, and as well uh, generally speaking regarding to the real airplane so uh, once the procedure will be enforced I will let you know and we will go deeply 
uh, through the details uh, how to establish these reports, uh, what is our categorism, uh, what are the app, the the, uh, the approach procedure type A, the approach procedure type B. Okay, so uh, and I will show you the pictures and we will go through it and. I will be very surprised and I will would like to know how SimBrief and Navigraph deal uh, with these procedures and uh, let's say put it uh, into the flight simulator so far. So thank you very much for watching and have a safe flights uh, regarding to the special uh, autumn conditions uh, and low visibility as well. So have a safe flight. Bye.